Hello everybody, it's your favorite boy here. The most prolific street artist in Eastern Helsinki, Nope Mazda. And today I just thought I would briefly go through the build that I've been using for the Shadow of the Earth Tree DLC for Elden Ring. And then maybe I could demonstrate it a little on the boss that we can soon see over there. So minor spoilers, I guess, if you haven't seen this boss yet. If this area doesn't look familiar to you, maybe don't watch me fight the boss then. Anyway, so it is quite basic what we are running with here. I'm just at level 150. Uh, my starting class was Confessor. A 60 Vigor for, you know, help. Uh, 16 mind, that's so that I get exactly 100 FP, because that's the optimal amount of FP to have. And I do cast some spells, mainly buffs. Uh, 30 endurance, uh, because I want to be able to wear a little heavier armor, and having stamina is nice. 60 strength, so it's a primarily a strength build, uh, as you can see from the hammers. I also have 16 dexterity for some weapon requirements, and uh, I had some points to spend. Uh, 25 fate and 13 intelligence. The 13 intelligence was so that I could use the sacred order plate uh, weapon buff or something, but then I actually never really ended up using it. So those four points, if you're running Confessor that is, uh, you can put somewhere else, maybe Fate for slightly higher income scaling or to Dexterity to uh, better meet some more uh, weapon requirements and stuff like that. That's for the stats. Uh, as for the equipment, these I kept changing pretty much all the time. How I make build is, builds is that I just like to have the opportunity to use as many weapons as I can. Uh, and the armor also, uh, I just let my wife choose the pieces for me and maybe adjusted the talismans so that I can wear everything at once. I also pretty much always have the claw mark seal equipped because it gives me the highest ingant scaling with these statses. Flask of Wanderous Physics. We have, uh, I mainly use the stamina recovery and now I'm trying out the opaline heart here. This is, this is actually what I used for uh, the final boss of the DLC. Uh, for that fight I actually ended up, another weapon I use a lot is the sword lance, also from the DLC. This one is pretty nice, I just slap in a, slap on a blood affinity there. Uh, it still does a decent damage and you can poke through seal, uh, you can do some shield poking. This is what I used for the final boss and it turned out pretty nicely. I also used the Sekiro tier for that, it was, that worked pretty well. So uh, his moves weren't too hard to learn to parry, I guess you can call it a parry, a deflect I guess. Uh, but I did use a great shield also and did some poking so that made it also a little easier. The, the final boss is really... Uh, kind of, I, I feel it's like really easy to just like shield tank it. So if you're uh, struggling with the final boss, try using a great shield, uh, in my opinion. And besides that, I usually keep changing these talismans, but the claw talisman is a mainstay really that I use pretty often because you know, my gameplay involves this a lot. Uh, I mean, it's simple, but it works. This is what I used used to deal with Melania, also in the main game. But actually for Melania I used uh, Storm Color a lot, that as of War is like really really good. Just any humanoid sized boss just really gets staggered by that. Oh uh, yeah, before we start I also would like to mention that my Shadow Realm Blessing is at 18 and 19, so uh, if your numbers doesn't match me with these stats, that might be the reason. Uh, yeah, so I think I'll just send it then. My first time doing this boss, by the way. Uh, I've seen a little about it, uh, but I don't know any of the moves, or... But I do know that it has a decent amount of faces. Okay. Alrighty then, as you can see this does a decent amount of damage. Like that. 
quite tanky with these talismans and buffs. Okay, so I'm really just supposed to hit it when it hits it. Puts it heads, puts its head on the ground or something. Okay, got one. Oh. Oh, I should have probably utilized that. Okay. I could have got there, but I can't be bothered with this tankiness. See? It's a little bit more tanky now. You might need to start respecting it, Loki. Let's do a little heal. Oh! That's fun. I do think holy damage is negation could have worked here. Oh, I can just hit the base. I see. That's a little bit more streamlined. But yeah, I, I've heard that this is not considered to be a too hard of a boss. I can know, I can see that. Okay, so now I'm supposed to hit the... No, my goodness. Hit the head! This is supposed to be in the next phase. The other flight, uh, for fun. I don't know if the thing is active. That did something. I still have plenty of heals, I'm not too worried. I'm just, I, just, I just face tank everything apparently. I'm not even trying to dodge them out of the time. Baby, first try, baby. So yeah, that's how I play Elden Ring. Uh, just kidding. That's not always how I do this. I'm actually uh, my second playthrough that I started season this now going with a more dexterity build. Uh, so I do have to actually roll. This is kind of sad, but yeah. Uh, if you're struggling with the DLC. This build might work for you. It's not too hard to operate. And you can always slap on a great shield and some talismans to boost that. Uh, this one I'll be using mainly. Uh, yeah. Bye.